my school days, we had a schoolmaster who had a speech impediment. And he quite literally went, oh, oh. I want to oh, say oh, oh, and we used to count the ohms in a lesson. We did this because we had to turn something that was extremely tiresome into something that could become amusing and unfortunately at the expense of the master. The lesson, of course, is well learned here and I am thrilled at the fact that we no longer need a grunt master in this class. We do, however, need a grammarian. <laughs> Alan started with Area 91, which we are a part of. Of which we are a part. So I, that is one I would use. I, I would not use, end that sentence with all. Although the famous example, which I think I've described before, of Churchill saying that that is something up with which he will not put. Uh, actually, when he wrote that in the margin of, of, of a report, because the report had done this, had ended a sentence with a preposition, and where he wrote, that is something up with which I will not put, he was actually being facetious, because it sounded so ridiculous that the person had attempted to avoid ending a sentence with a preposition. So we don't have to be dogmatic about it. But just bear in mind that if we can avoid ending sentences with prepositions, it is happier. Robert then gave us the timing for the evening, and he actually described that we have, we have one minute time devaluation. I thought, devaluating the time? No, it's timed evaluation. <laughs> the phrase, did, did, did I get to the point? And let's pick one, uh, Jill. Oh, Jill was, Jill was describing to us what, what she wanted Ellie to do. That's right. And she said, uh, did Ellie get to the point? But her enunciation, she, she got the get, the beautiful T. But by the time she got to the end of the sentence, we lost the T at the uh, point. And I'm going to say on, on this question of enunciation that I personally would not encourage people to change the way they speak. That's not what this is for. We all have our own distinctive ways of speaking. But that shouldn't prevent us, when we are standing here, from enunciating carefully, even in our own style. And I would encourage us, please, to end our end our words with consonants, where they have them. Uh, Ellie's speech, who am I? Uh, Ellie has his own very distinctive style of speech, and in fact I gave him a full personal evaluation, and there were no errs or runs. Quite remarkable in, in some of our early speakers managing to do this so well. Tony, the tunnel, love his shirt. Where's his shirt? Stand up, show us his shirt. Oh, I've got to spin around. <laughs> Now, Tony, Tony's got a particularly distinctive speaking voice. I, I, I like it. I like it enormously. There is one word which I really struggle with, and even the newsreaders do this. They, they, don't, they drop the L off hospital. I can't actually do it. I don't know how it's done, but Tony does it beautifully. <laughs> he drops the L at the end of hospital, and I, I would encourage him if he can find that L to, to put it back. It's one of those words that, have, that I hear every time it, 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 it disappears. His optician, his mother's optician, underwent a few tests. I don't think the optician underwent the tests. I think your mother will underwent the tests. He undertook the tests. <coughs> the, uh, the, the words are undescribable. Uh, I think they're indescribable. And I, but I particularly his phrase that his mother will literally see out her days. That was a beautiful piece of the yeah. Graham, <laughs> we, we, we heard, uh, I think it was Tony who first described us this evening as hodders. So 
a word I, I enjoy. Graham used a word, Toastmaster Assessors, <laughs> which I've never quite heard before, but it's quite perfectly reasonable. Why shouldn't Toastmasters have an O's after it as well, like Hollis has an O's after it? Well, <clears throat> he, he had one of the, and then repeated, one of the club's goals. Maybe that becomes two goals, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm making a lighthearted, it's a lighthearted way of pointing out that some of us, many of us, repeat words instead of uh, repeat, instead of using us, as I just did there. And it's an easy device. And fun enough, it's an attractive and, and a, le a legitimate device. device. Sam, uh, with his, he used the word viscerally, he was the first person to use the word uh, viscerally. Well done to Sam. He described the man's portfolio got entirely annihilated. Got. We can do better than got. Get. These, 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 are, these are crutch words. And I certainly avoid them when I'm writing. And I try to avoid them when I'm speaking. It's okay, but try, try not to. I love Sam's pauses. He uses them all the time, and of course, at the very end of the speech, he used it when he, he asked us to, to take a moment to reflect. Mr. Toastmaster, it was beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought by cue. <laughs> George, my opinion. No, 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 I'm on green. Uh, Peter Noah. Jill uh, uh, Cor Corleone uh, hygiene. I, I'm sure. It's sure. I'm sure hygiene and hygiene. <laughs> I, I wanted to say hygiene. Anyway, never, never mind. Never mind. That's the kitchen. Lo loved it. Loved the idea that Tingo means shut up, Harry. <laughs> Love it. We were the second part of the evening. Jill avoided the use of the word journey very cleverly by using it. <laughs> then she, of course, Jill is the expert at the, at the word earth. She actually encourages us all to go, oh, <laughs> and we all grow. So that's, that's a legitimate use of the earth. The, eval the evaluations started to get a few. Uh, Jill, surprisingly, worth pointing out to you that you are using five, five you use five words. Angela started with hello, and she ended with thank you, and so shall I. Yeah. <laughs>